Chapter 9. What Boy? Welcome back, came a soft, lovely voice. Jack opened his eyes. It was Morgan. They hadn't seen Morgan in a long time. Morgan, cried Annie. She threw her arms around the enchantress. Jack jumped up and hugged Morgan, too. It's good to see you both, said Morgan. Arf, arf. And it's good to see you, too, Morgan said, smiling at the little dog. Look, said Annie. She reached into Jack's pack and pulled out the piece of painted bark. A gift from a kangaroo. We have all four gifts now, said Jack. Good work, said Morgan. She picked up the first gift. It was the pocket watch from the Titanic. Once upon a time, there was a boy who wasted time, Morgan said. This watch teaches him that time is very precious. It must be used wisely. Morgan picked up their second gift, the eagle's feather from the Lakota Indians. Sometimes the boy was afraid to stand up for himself, she said. The eagle's feather teaches him that a small creature can be one of the bravest. Morgan picked up the lotus flower from the forest in India. Sometimes the boy did not respect nature, she said. This flower teaches him that nature holds many wonders. Morgan picked up the piece of bark with the painting of the rainbow serpent. Sometimes the boy didn't want to study it. Other times and places, she said. This painting teaches him there is mystery, magic, and wisdom in the traditions of ancient people. What boy? Jack asked. Who are you talking about? asked Annie. Morgan didn't answer right away. She placed her hands on Jack and Annie's shoulders. Thank you, she said, for helping this boy learn his lessons. Thank you for breaking the spell. What boy? Jack asked again. Arf, arf, arf. Jack and Annie looked over at Teddy. Then something magical happened. In a flutter of time, in a spin of the whirl, whirl in the spin of a whirlwind, Teddy was changed. He was no longer a dog. He was a boy. Chapter 10, Dream Time. The boy was on his hands and knees. Meet my young helper from Camelot, said Morgan. The boy glanced up. He was a friendly, fr he had a friendly freckled face and twinkly dark eyes. His hair was the same color as Teddy's fur had been. He looked a bit older than Jack, about 10 or so. Am I back, he asked. Sorry, I was kind of guessing whether or not I wanted to show you first or after. You're back, said Morgan. The boy leaped up and hugged her. Thank you, he cried. And I hope next time you'll ask before trying the spells in my book, said Morgan. The boy grinned sheepishly. I promise. Then he looked at Jack and Annie. I accidentally changed myself into a dog, he said. Annie laughed. But at least I, ha I got to have exciting adventures as a dog, he said. You were a great dog, said Annie. We liked you as Teddy. What's your real name? If you like, you can call keep calling me Teddy. The boy said, or how about Ted? Okay, Ted, said Amy. Jack just nodded. He was still in shock. Ted is in training to work at my library in Camelot, said Morgan. He has a rare gift for magic. Cool. You, you helped us a lot, Ted, said Jack. Finally finding his voice. Oh, no, it was both of you who helped me, said Ted. You helped break the spell, and I found new stories to take home. You did, said Amy. Ted nodded. The story of the Titanic, the story of the white buffalo woman, the story of the wounded tiger, and the story of the rainbow serpent, he said. I'll write them down as soon as I get home, so people can read them in Morgan's library. And home is where we must go now, I'm afraid, said Morgan. Oh, said Annie sadly, that's too bad. Yeah, said Jack, he was sad too. I know we will meet again some day, said Ted. I hope so, said Jack. Me too, said Annie. Bye. She started down the ladder. Jack pulled on his pack. With a heavy heart, he followed. When they got to the ground, they looked up. Morgan and Ted were at the window. They both seemed to glow in the afternoon light. The magic treehouse will return for, for you soon, said Morgan. I promise. She waved, and they waved back. Goodbye, Jack and Annie, said Jack and Annie. She said, oh, sorry. Goodbye, Jack and Annie, she said. Arf, said Ted. In a flutter of time, in a spin of a whirlwind, the magic treehouse was gone. For a long moment, Jack and Annie stared at the empty tree. Ready for dinner, Annie asked softly. Jack nodded. He felt dazed as if they walked silently through the, as they walked silently through the Frog Creek woods. When they came to their street, the sun was settled. A flock of black birds flew through the silvery pink sky. 
Annie broke their silence as if headed as they headed for their house. We had a great great adventures with Teddy. I mean Ted, didn't we? She said. Yeah, said Jack. It was like he searched for the right words. Like like living in dream in a dreamland, said Annie. Yeah, said Jack, he smiled. That's exactly what it was like. And it looks like It looks like we have a bonus story, the Rainbow Serpent. In Aborigine myth, the Rainbow Serpent not only brings rain, but also helped create the world. At the beginning of time, the Rainbow Serpent awoke from a sleep and pushed through the Earth's crust. As it traveled over empty land, it left behind deep tracks. The Rainbow Serpent called the frogs to come out from beneath the Earth. It tickled the frogs' bellies, then they laughed. Water poured out of their mouths. The water filled the Rainbow Serpent's tracks, making rivers and lakes. Grass grew, then all creatures, birds, lizards, snakes, kangaroos, koalas, and dingoes woke up and took their places on earth. That's kind of a cool story. So that is the end of Magic Treehouse book 20. Wow. Reading a book a day, you get through a lot of them. And we have finished 20 books together. It just blows my mind. Now next week, I do plan to get back to normal. I am going to at least read one book throughout the week just my two chapters like I normally do and that book is ooh Civil War on Sunday Cannon Fire that's what Jack and Annie hear when the magic tree ask whisks them back to the time of the American Civil War they were, there they meet a famous nurse named Clara Barton and do their best to help wounded soldiers it is their hardest journey in time yet and one that will make the most difference in their own lives find out why and Magic Treehouse book 21. So we're going to read this one normally. So we're going to read it all next week. And then I might do another five book week right after that, which will bring us to book 20. If I read five more books, that will mean we finish book 26. And then we only have three books left. We are doing a wonderful job. And sticking to our goals, which is awesome and important. I hope you are having a wonderful week. This is going to be the last book I read. I know it's not Friday, but I did read five because I started on Sunday. Um, I did that in case there was a day I couldn't read, but it worked out that I read all those days, especially because I'm going out of town tomorrow. So it's good that I got all my reading done, right? It's like I got my homework done. I just have a little bit more homework for other activities that I need to get done. But I hope you have a wonderful are having a wonderful summer. I hope you are having awesome adventures kind of like Jack and Annie do and I miss you and I can't wait till we can learn together again soon. Bye-bye.